Hey, welcome back. So if this is your first time here, welcome. <laughs> My name is Herman. And if you are brand new here, um, we do upload every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. So make sure to hit the red subscribe button, ring the bell. So that way you get notified when we do any weight loss tips or anything like that. And we are live every single Tuesday night. Um, yeah. So tonight we are going to be uh, talking about diets and why diets don't work. And here's the deal. I am an expert in failing <laughs> at diets. I, there is, I am, there's not very many people more qualified that I know of than me to tell you about how diets stink, how they don't work. I spent more than a decade as a weight loss failure, trying nearly every single diet under the sun. And most of them quietly. I wasn't like the loud diet talker. You know, sometimes you talk to a girlfriend and they're like, oh, I'm doing this. Oh, I'm doing that. Oh, I was the chick who did it on the down low because I didn't want everybody else around me to know how many times I was failing. And it was if, if I started a new diet and it didn't work, or if I didn't work, then I could quietly bow out stage left and nobody would know. That clearly did me no favors because after 10 years as a morbidly obese woman, um, I was still morbidly obese. <laughs> and how do you know if what you're doing is working? Well, you have results. And I had none when it came to health. I had results in other parts of my life, but when it came to my health, when it came to my, the size of my booty, it was a size 22. And even when I would lose some weight, have you ever done this? Have you ever lost some weight and then you went and found it again in a couple of his buddies? So like you lose five pounds and then you gain seven. You lose 10 pounds and then you gain 12. Like that was what I did for the better part of a decade. Um, and I finally had gotten to the point where I started to believe that I was just morbidly obese, that I was just big boned, that there was those skinny, small, petite people. And that wasn't me. Um, I really did believe I was big boned. And I believed that I would never be one of those small tiny people and coming from a size 22 coming from a morbidly obese uh frame anything smaller than an uh, an eight six four two like those were like tiny little people especially a four and a two like what the frick ever and so imagine my shock like my true genuine what in the world when i went from a size 22 down to a size two in 13 months it shattered everything I thought about myself. It shattered the the whole the whole big boned idea, the big boned lie that I had bought into for a decade. Because again, <laughs> here I am failing at weight loss, so I must be big boned. It must just be my genetics. And so I tried dieting for a very long time. And tonight I want to talk to you why Diets are not a long-term solution. And if you are trying to lose weight, more importantly, if you want to lose it and keep it off, you have to run from the diet concept and you have to adapt the lifestyle concept. Because here's the deal. However you lose the weight is how you will maintain the weight. So if you lose a hundred, if you lose a hundred pounds and you you're in the gym five hours a day, our bodies are smart. So now your body's gonna get used to all that calorie burn, all that working out. So now if you don't keep that up, your body will adjust. So here you can still be doing the same thing, you just cut your workouts in half and your body's gonna completely react to that. And so however you choose to lose the weight is how you will have to choose to live if you want to maintain that weight loss. You know, there's a lot of things running around. It used to be the Atkins diet. Now it's keto. There's always a fad. There's always a fad. And I'm not a fan of any of these fads. And here's why. Yes, they work for short-term loss. But my question is, the same question I had to ask myself. So my question to you is, do you want to lose 50 pounds and then gain it back? Like not, listen, the, the statistics are, 95% of people gain all their weight back, then some, in one to five years. 
So do you want to lose the weight, go shopping, get all the clothes, shop in all the cute stores, and then gain it all back and have all these cute clothes you can't wear? Or do you want to lose the weight, create a lifestyle, maintain it, and when you're 90, you're still rocking those skinny jeans and that bodysuit, if that's your thing. <laughs> and so let's go ahead and jump right in of why diets didn't work for, for me, why they don't work for clients, and why a lifestyle change is the better way to go. And so if you rewind six and a half years ago uh, after popping out baby number two, reading a statistic that linked obesity and kids to the parents, that's when I had my big epiphany that, wow, like it doesn't matter what I say, it's what I do. I cannot, the, the odds are stacked against me that I can be morbidly obese and raise skinny kids. And even if they're skinny kids, but I give them morbidly obese habits, eventually it's going to catch up with them. Because if you're overweight, it's because you have overweight habits. I was morbidly obese. So my habits were morbidly obese habits. Well, we pass our habits down to our kids, whether we want to or not, because it's never about what we say, they model what we do. And if your kid just might have fast metabolism, but if they, that meta at some point it will catch up them. We all, we've all seen skinny kids or we graduated with someone that was skinny from high school and we see him 10 years later and it's like, wow, what happened? Like you were always so skinny, like dude, what happened? <laughs> you ran for the border a lot. I ran for the border a lot. Um, Taco Bell, ran, run for the border. Fourth meal, yep, me and Taco Bell, we were like homegirls, home slices, like bros, like. <laughs> anyway, and so it wasn't until that I was like, okay, like I, I need to change my habits. And this needs to be something that I can do now and that I can do for the rest of my life. But part of the reason I always like the fad diets is because I was impatient. Is anyone else impatient about losing the weight? You're like, oh my gosh, I want it gone yesterday. Like I wanted to start losing weight and lose 10 pounds the first week. And if I didn't, I was like, oh man, I always had unrealistic expectations. But listen, listen, listen to me. Listen, Linda. <laughs> where did that even come from? I, I find myself saying it all the time. And I'm like, where did that come from? Anyway, listen. We are all, we all want results like yesterday. We all would like to snap our fingers and transform our bodies from where we're at to where we want to go. But that's not realistic. And the longer we chase unrealistic expect, as long as we have unrealistic expectations, and as long as we chase this fantasy of results yesterday, we will not get the results we want. And so it's better, I think you'd agree, it's better to slow the results down and get results slower. Let's say it takes you 10 months to lose 50 pounds, but you can maintain it versus five months to lose 50 pounds and you gain it all back in one to five years. And you main, you can, you can stay on the hamster roller coaster of lose it, gain it, lose it, gain it, lose it, gain it. And so, all right, so here's the thing with diets. Diets by the very nature of a diet are temporary. Typically people are dieting to reach a certain weight loss goal, to reach a certain size goal. They have a goal in mind to reach the diet. And so, okay, I'm gonna cut out carbs until I lose 20 pounds. I'm going to um, not eat sugar until I get back into this dress. I'm going to cut out fast food until my family reunion. I'm going to, we have like this thing we're gonna do until we get to a certain goal. And here's what I will tell you. If you make a change to get a change, so if you start counting your calories to lose 50 pounds, you lose those 50 pounds, okay? Let's say you were 200 pounds, you started counting calories to lose 50 pounds, now you're at 150 pounds. If you get to 150 pounds and you go back to your old habits, your old habits are going to lead you right back to those habits because our habits, we first form our habits and then our habits form us. So our backside is the result of the habits we created. And so it's about taking our bad habits, creating new 
ones that we can do from now until we depart this planet. And so for me, it wasn't, okay, I'm going to do a diet because a diet is short term. A diet is temporary. So for me, six and a half years ago, it was thinking about, okay, what can I do now and for the rest of my life? What can I do when I'm 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90? What is something that I would be okay with that I wouldn't feel de completely deprived? Because, you know, you're going to have, look, <laughs> I'm always the first one to say I love chocolate cake. I love pizza. I love queso and chips. I love Taco Bell. I love all the things. However, if I don't have some limitation, um, if I don't make some changes, there's not going to be any changes. Like all of us know that we can't keep doing what we've been doing if we want to make a change to our health. There's got to be a change. You have to make a change if you want to see a change. So with that being said, it was what can I do now that I can do forever? And I had heard uh, somebody that I have followed in the fitness world talk about, you know, moderation, talk about balance. And I said, okay, balance, what does that look like? And I started going down the balance, balance, the balance, getting on the balance band, bandwagon, and I can't talk, the balance bandwagon. And it was like, okay, 80-20. Because I already knew from success in business that it's never what you do some of the time that determines your results. It's what you do most of the time that determines your results. It's what you do most of the time that determines your results. It is what you do most of the time, not some of the time. It's not that one rogue donut at the, in the break room at lunch that made you fluffy. It's not the extra cookie you had at 10 o'clock at night that made you fluffy. It's doing those things over and over and over so that that becomes your habit and eating the carrot sticks less. Does that make sense? And so I was like, okay, balance, 80-20. If I eat the chicken breast and the broccoli 80% of the time, and I eat the pizza and the french fries 20% of the time, if I am eating according to my goals 80% of the time and eating according to my cravings only 20% of the time, that's a pretty good balance. And so I started adapting that. I started because what I used to do was cut out all the sugar, all the carbs, and then I would do great for a day or two days or a week, and then I would go binge and eat all of it. I'd be like, F this, this isn't worth it. Like a life without chocolate is no life at all. And so of course I don't eat those things every day, but I do have balance and I do eat them on most weeks unless there's a specific goal or something specific that I'm doing. Um, I have chocolate on a weekly basis. I have carbs every single day. And so, and it's, this has been the first time that I've lost weight and been able to maintain it. All the times prior, I would lose it and then gain it all back. But guys, I got to a size two over five years ago and I'm still there today. I still have one size in my closet. I'm still wearing the clothes today that I wore right after I lost the weight. And it's been because balance. I don't have a short term, I'm doing a diet. It's a long term, I will be doing this for the rest of my life. And I know for some of you that are just starting on your weight loss journey, that might seem a little daunting. Like it might seem a little daunting to think that because you're stuck in the diet mindset, you're stuck in the diet mindset of I'm limited, I'm limited, I can't, I can't, I can't. So with the diet, that's the whole thing about a diet mindset. A lifestyle mindset is completely different. 80-20 mindset is completely different than a diet mindset. A diet mindset says, I can't have the cheesecake. I can't have the chocolate cake. I'm on this diet and I'm being restricted. Well, I don't know about you, but when someone tells you you can't have something, how does that make you feel? When someone says you can't have it. For me, I want to be like, oh yeah? <laughs> oh yeah? Oh yeah? Like when someone tells me I can't do something, it makes me want to rebel and go do it anyway. It doesn't empower me. It makes me want to go do it just because I can't watch me, right? And so when you have a lifestyle, it's a choice. You're not eating, you're not not eating something because you're restricted. 
you're not eating it because you're eating according to your goals. And so when someone says, you know, now, hey, Carmen, do you want some of this cake? Well, if it's a Tuesday, I typically know on Tuesday nights, no, I'm not, I'm going to choose not to have chocolate cake because I want to have chocolate cake on Saturday on family dinner night. And so Tuesday night, I'm going to choose to drink my water or my tea and I'm going to choose to eat the cake on Saturday night. Why? Because I'm eating according to my goals. It's not that I can't have the chocolate cake. If I want the chocolate cake, I'll eat the freaking chocolate cake. But this is my goal. So does that chocolate cake on Tuesday line up with my goal of maintaining a size two? No. If I start eating too much chocolate cake and I start letting the morbidly obese girl back out <laughs> with those morbidly obese habits, if I if I start the morbidly obese habits, I will wind up back at morbidly, morbidly obese again because we form our habits and our habits form us. You can't have overweight habits and be skinny. It doesn't match. It doesn't work. Your habits will make you. And so it's eating according to my goals. And when you say, yeah, I can have the chocolate cake, but you know what? I'm good. I'm actually going to choose not to. I'm totally good. One is restricting. One makes you want to like, yeah, yeah, I can have the chocolate cake. One is empowering. One is like, no, I'm choosing my goals over my cravings. I'm choosing my, I'm using my willpower muscle instead of eating something that's going to wind up as caca in the toilet tomorrow. And so, um, it's like, you got to flip it around and get rid of this diet mindset of, I can't, it's, I choose, I'm choosing to eat according to my goals versus eating according to my cravings and my feelings, which are short term and will pass anyway. All right. Um, next thing, a lot of diets restrict food groups and the biggest here, look, most diets are after short term results. Okay. And you've got to understand, and it took me, I am a hard headed sucker. Anybody else hard headed? I am hard, hard headed. And so sometimes it takes me a little longer to get things than it takes other people. And it took me a very long time to realize that the diet industry was an industry. That the diet, the people making the diets didn't really want me to succeed. And I remember the first time I heard this, I was like, well, what do you mean? Like they make that diet because they want you to succeed. But the diet industry is a billion dollar industry. They make money. If they sold us all a diet and we went out and everybody got skinny, then <laughs> what would happen to the diet industry if it always worked? The diet industry is banking on you and I failing. They are banking on us losing it and then going and finding it again. They are counting on it. Why? Because when they, when they keep us fluffy, when they keep us chubby, when they keep us overweight, then they know we're eventually gonna come back and buy something else. They're keeping us, giving our cash to them to try to get freaking results. And so the diet industry is not on our side. The diet industry wants us to lose it, get some stories, tell our friends about it, they go buy it, but when you're dieting, again, it's not sustainable. They know you're gonna go lose those 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds, and then in one to five years, 95% are gonna gain it back. Those are the facts, those are the statistics, those are the hard numbers. And so when you start realizing that, and again, I'm not saying all, I'm not saying there's no um, dieters, diet companies out there that don't want you to succeed. I don't think they're out there going, come on, honey, gain it all back. But I think they know the numbers. And I don't think that, I think they know that their company's success hinges on us failing, bottom line. And so I'm really an advocate for helping people break that cycle. I'm really an advocate for even if it takes you twice as long to lose the weight, but you can maintain it. In fact, when I start working with a client in one of our boot camps, it's like, look, yes, my first goal is, to, you know, I find, what, how much do weight do you want to lose? Okay, great. Do you want to lose it slow, medium pace, or fast? All right, how, what's your pace you want to go at? And I let them know up front, look, my number one goal is to help you reach this goal. So if, you're, if you weigh 250 pounds and you want to lose 100 pounds, my number one goal 
is helping you lose that weight. My second goal is equipping you with the skill so that on the road, on the way, on the journey of losing the weight, that you will gain the skill so that when you get to your destination, so that when you get to where you're going, that you have the skill, that you are equipped on how to maintain it. Because if you can't maintain it, then all you're doing is jacking up your body. And so many fad diets that, you know, the keto diet, like there's so many studies out there that show, you know, that it does damage. And your body is smart. When you do these, when you do these extreme diets or these fad diets, your body adapts. Like your body adapts to eating no carbs. And so your body is way smarter. <laughs> <laughs> my body is way smarter. Let's not talk about your body. Let's talk about my body. My body is way smarter than I ever gave it credit for. Like way, way smarter than I ever gave it credit for. And so it'll adapt and it'll be like, oh, you're not eating carbs. So then if I ever want to go eat carbs, it's going to blow right back up. And so at the end of the day, how long do you want to be stuck on this hamster wheel? How long do you want to have five sizes in your closet? How long do you want to torture yourself with losing the weight, having everybody say, oh my gosh, you lost the weight, and then you gain it back? Like, I know what it's like not to want to go to a get-together because you know you've gained 30 pounds back, or you don't want to see somebody because the last time you saw them, you were skinny, and now you're not, and they're going to, they're going to like, how could they not notice? Like, come on. Like, I know what that's like. I know what it's like to live in the shame of being overweight, the burden of having all these cute clothes in my closet that I cannot wear because I've outgrown my clothes. There is a way, there is hope. <laughs> there are systems that are in place that have proven track records of working. If I can go from being morbidly obese 288 pounds, busting out of a size 22, being a weight loss failure for better than a decade. If I can do that, then you can certainly reach your goals. You can certainly succeed, even if you're like me and you have a decade, a track record of failure behind you. Your past failures mean squat to your future successes. It's making some simple changes. It's making some simple tweaks to what you're doing. Most of you are closer to success with your health and with weight loss than you ever even imagined. And it's not, it's not a big thing. It's gonna take making some little tiny adjustments, tiny little tweaks that are gonna change everything. Tiny little tweaks that are gonna, that are gonna take you from struggling and striving to succeeding wildly. Like the type of success that blows your mind. The type of success that other people look at and have to do a double take because they're like, whoa, wait, is that cannot be the same person or that has to be photoshopped because there's no freaking way. Those are the kind of results um, that the girls in our boot camps, in our, in our virtual fit clubs, in our weight loss challenges get. The kind of that they, they take aging and they give it the middle finger. Where you look at them side by side and you think the picture, they're older and they're actually younger because they've lost the weight, they have energy, they've gotten their youth back. And it doesn't take as long as you think. And just, if you, if you were to dedicate one year, one year of your life to your health and your fitness, you would shock yourself at where you could be. You would shock yourself. So, so much so that if you're walking by and you see your reflection in a mirror, you don't even know that you, you think it's some other broad sneaking up on you. You're like, whoa, whoa, what, what, oh, oh, it's me. <laughs> Done this. When after I lost the weight, I, I would like see a security camera and I'd be like, who is this hussy sneaking up behind me? Don't she know she's in my bubble? And I'd be like, oh wait, that's me. Like, because I had looked at my 22 size frame for a lot of years. Now all of a sudden I was a size two. Like it took my mind a little while to catch up with where my body had gotten to. Um, but at the end of the day, get off the diet road coaster. Pick a lifestyle. Realize that, you know, don't buy into the fantasy lottery ticket that you can do, you can do a diet to lose the weight, go back to your old habits, and you're going to maintain it. 
If you go back to overweight habits, you're going to get overweight. If you go back to more of the obese habits, if all of a sudden today, after maintaining a size two for all these years, if I went back to how I used to eat, I would wind up morbidly obese all over again. First we make our habits and then they make us. And so anyway, thank you so much for watching tonight, um, for joining us, whether you're on here live with us or whether you're watching the replay. Um, I've, I've loved spending this time with you and make sure to check out some of our other videos. And again, hit the subscribe button, smash the like button and ring the bell. That way you don't miss any of our uploads, any of our tips, any of our recipes. Delish, oh, the other week we made delicious peanut butter cups. We made 190 calorie sliced chocolate cake with this oh, mousse whipped icing. Anyway, you don't wanna miss that stuff. <laughs> so make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you.